So I'm sitting here with the bass stickman Kyle Chapman, and you were just attending an anti-Linda Sarsour protest. Is that what it was? That's correct. Do you want to just tell me what happened? You know what you were doing there? Yeah, sure. So we had a lot of patriots show up for the uh, anti-Sharia law protest. Uh, great showing. A lot of warriors. A lot of guys ready to fight and bleed for freedom and liberty, which is what's necessary for the preservation of our constitutional republic. Had a small showing by Antifa, Antifa really uh, quite pathetic. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was a successful rally. Milo got up there and gave a, a blistering firebrand of a speech, loved it. Um, had, had a few uh, scuffles, couple encounters with Antifa. One of their, their people hit one of our elderly with their signs, and they found out really quick that, that uh, we're not gonna stand by and allow those sort of violent attacks to happen. So I think I saw that uh, as the group was walking out, I didn't see what actually happened. All I saw was a bunch of people rush to the aid of an older woman and then immediately start screaming at this this other young woman who was carrying a sign. Yeah. I assume, yeah. She so, was the one who hit the, the, the elderly woman with the sign. Jesus. Wow. And so what these people are finding now, so they were able to do this in the past. And they, they got away with it. And conservatives just kind of allowed it to happen. Um, that was a different group of people. You know, we got a different now. We have a new group of people that are showing up, and we're not going to stand by and allow organized leftist violence to systematically oppress our First Amendment rights. What? So I've been covering protests for a long time. I mean, I've been going to protests my whole life. I rarely, if ever, see conservatives actually have protests. It yeah. seems like it's, it's something new. I mean, do you feel that way? Yeah, it is. Conservatives. All right, you know, generally speaking, a very hardworking, law-abiding people. Uh, most of them have jobs that prevent them from showing up to protests like this. Uh, you know, they're worried about getting arrested, uh, potentially. Uh, to have, the right typically has an aversion to violence in general, where the left has uh, embraced it for some time and, uh, and, and they're organized to 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 get together. <laughs> Excuse me, and, and inflict this violence upon us. That's changed, and I, and I think what happened is March fourth has changed. That, that was that was the, the Berkeley, first the uh, first battle of Berkeley. That was was that when you showed up in your in your gear as, yeah. as the base state man? Yeah. So, what what inspired you to? Don the gear and come with a shield and the stick. So I've been watching all the the Trump protests uh, go on during the election cycle. Yeah. What was happening to the Trump supporters and my right wing brothers and sisters in Fury? You now I at that time, uh, you know, I, I stood down basically because I was finishing off some federal probation at that time for a non crime, by the way. Felon in possession of a handgun. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been a crime if I hadn't been a felon. Uh, so, so I had to stand down because I knew if I showed up at these rallies, I, I would probably uh, act in defense of myself and my brothers and sisters, and I'd have to go to jail and then be violated and have to start everything all over again, and go back to the federal penitentiary. So, uh, fast forward, I finally got off of federal parole. And I was ready to rock and roll again. Uh, the Milo event happened. I watched the videos of the 300, 350 Antifa show up, attacked by right wing brothers and sisters, mace people, knock people out, smash them in the head after after they were unconscious on the ground. And that was the straw that broke the hammer's back. I knew that was it. And I would have to turn out the next rally and, and defend uh, my right wing brothers and sisters. And I, so I found out about the, the event, the first battle of Berkeley, March 4th. And, uh, and I knew I had to do something. You know, I knew I had to be there, so I showed up. I initially did not have the helmet or the goggles or the respirator on. That was all in a backpack. Uh, I never tried anything on beforehand. I didn't like run around my house looking in mirrors. You know, it's, the way that outfit came together was purely coincidence. Uh, and so after I was maced uh, three times, I donned the helmet, the goggles, and the respirator, and. Uh, yeah, I guess Bay Stick was born. So I don't, I, I absolutely don't want to downplay the violence from Antifa, right? We saw them in Berkeley throwing explosives, bashing people over the head, but 
there has been criticism that when you became the base stick man, when you when you had the shield, it sort of escalated the, the tensions or the potential for violence. And then the following event, we see more people are inspired to bring shields, masks, and sticks. Do you think that? Do you think it's a bad thing that people are being are inspired by you to also come with shield sticks or, or no, to take action? Absolutely not. It, it's a good thing, and it's it's what's necessary to to win the war against organized leftist violence. What you have to do is you have to take away their weapons. You wear a helmet; they can't bludgeon you with sticks, and they can't lob you know fist-sized rocks at you and smash you in the head. Uh, you wear the goggles; well, they can no longer use the pepper spray. You know, you wear the respirator, it takes away the pepper spray. You bring your own flagpole, well, if they have a club, well now you, you can match their level of aggression with your own, you know, stick. So it, it's necessary for us to win, and it's necessary for us to organize. If we don't organize, if we don't take protective precautions to, to minimize their, their weaponry against us, we lose. One thing I noticed, it was really interesting, in Boston, the Antifa group, all on the front lines of the left side, they had sticks and clubs and pipes, and the conservatives all had shields. <laughs> and uh, I was just having a conversation with someone about that, and they were saying that that's, you know, as I was talking to, talking to another journalist, and they said that kind of shows you the interesting parallel here, that Antifa is showing up prepared to attack, and the conservatives are showing up prepared to defend. Yeah, that's, that's the whole purpose of this movement that I'm trying to start. It's a defensive movement. It's not an offensive movement, it's a defensive movement. Uh, and what we do is we match their aggression. We don't try to escalate things. Uh, I think, there's, for me, there's a potential that it's, it's escalation, right? Well, there's always a potential for escalation. Yeah. Anytime you go into combat. I mean, but, but how, else, how else do you expect conservatives to, to defend themselves if they don't bring... If Antifa is showing up, can they show up masked? They show up with weapons. The reason why they're masked and all dressed in black is because it makes it harder to identify <coughs> while committing acts of violence against us. Antifa's entire MO is to show up and commit political violence against those that don't agree with them. They, they actually say bash the fash. Bash the fash. Yeah, and so... You and know, by I, any means necessary, bam. That's, I mean, that is, that is li a literal interpretation. If it's violence, if it's assault, if it's uh, slander, if it's sabotage, it's by any means necessary. Violence is a component of that. Any means. Doesn't matter you, what it is. Violence, murder. It's at the Second Battle of Berkeley, we had somebody get stabbed multiple times. We had uh, Seth Rich, or not Seth, we had the bike lock attack. You know, who just got caught yesterday for smashing people in the head with a bike lock. The guy was a college professor. He got caught? Hmm? He got caught? He got caught. Yeah, they caught oh, wow. him yesterday. Oh, wow. Yeah, in yeah, possession yeah. of a firearm. Really? Yeah, he actually discharged the firearm during the arrest or something like that. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to read. Holy. I'm yeah. gonna, I'll look into that one. Yeah. I'll, I'll look into that one. Yeah. That, that's, that's crazy. That's, yeah. That's, yeah, so I'll check that out. Do you think, you know, with these groups, by any means necessary, I don't think, based on what you're saying, you're willing to do anything necessary. It sounds, you know, you said it's defensive. I'm not saying I, we're willing to do anything necessary. What we're willing to do is to stand up and defend our right to freedom of assembly and freedom of speech. Okay? If people don't want violence, then don't show up to our rallies and attack us. It's real simple. We had three rallies at Berkeley. The third rally at Berkeley, Antifa mustered their troops. They marched around within several blocks of the, the event, but they never showed up and engaged us and therefore there was no violence uh did we gather our people up and go after them we had scouts on every corner we knew where they were the entire time i could we, we had them outnumbered and, they and, and outmanned we could have i could have easily gathered uh a hundred men 100 200 pounds six foot tall men we could have gone out there and destroyed them but that's not our point our point is to successfully and peacefully carry out these rallies. So I guess, here's my question. If they're willing to do anything, but you aren't, do you think there comes a point where they're just going to come and do something with the explosives or some kind of weapon or maybe even a firearm? Well, they've used explosives already. That's, that's what I mean. Yeah. You know, you, I, I don't think you're willing to match that kind of aggression, throwing explosives into crowds of people. If, if what you're saying is defensive, yeah, so, so we definitely wouldn't be willing to, 
to go and start throwing uh, explosives in the crowd. So, you, know, that's you not think, our. You're, you're not willing to do that. No, no, that's that's not our mo. Uh, but if they show up and, and they do try to do that, then we will take other measures uh, that, that 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 can be just as effective to combat their their throwing of explosives. Uh, if it comes to guns, that's what the oath keepers are for. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, so we have we have, we have we have we have the oath keepers there, and uh, the oath keepers are usually strapped. They're all ex police officers. And they, they all have concealed carry licenses that are valid across state lines. Uh, so, just to let you know, Antifa, if you plan on doing that, that would be a very bad mistake. I just, I really hope this is this is it. I hope this is it. I hope it's shields and sticks. Like a shield and sticks, bad enough, you know. But we've already seen Antifa throw explosives, so I'm just hoping that the escalation tapers off, right? And we. It'd just be great if the violence didn't happen. You know what I mean? So, I, I guess, do uh, you have any final thoughts? Anything, anything else you want to add? Just that, you know, our, our founding fathers knew what was necessary for them to gain their freedom. For, for us to gain a, a free republic, uh, free of British tyranny, and, 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 and free of the, the, the oppression of the British. And what was necessary is for our men to go out and shed blood. And if, if you patriots expect this country to remain free, if you expect us to, if, if you want to preserve Western civilization, you have to be willing to bleed. You have to be willing to go do some time if necessary. That's the only way it works. If you're not willing to bleed, if you're not willing to do time like our founding fathers, we're ready to, to do and did do, we are going to lose our civilization, we are going to lose our country. It's time to man up. Now, just to clarify, you're not talking about people going out and being aggressive, you're talking about being defensive specifically. Being defensive. To defend yourself you're still from gonna bleed. Exactly. You're still I just want to make bleed. sure it doesn't yeah. sound like you're being like, go, like, be violent or anything. No, like no. I, we're not about that. But you have to be willing to mix it up. You have to, we have to get out on the streets. The left has been beating us on this street activism for decades. They turn people out on the streets uh, all the time, and they, they turn out in massive numbers. We have to do the same thing. Armchair patriots, they have to get off the couch, get out from behind the keyboards, show up at these rallies, and push back against communism, push back against socialism and Sharia law, radical Islamism, which is beginning to infest parts of our country. Uh, we can never allow this country to become Western Europe. We can never allow political correctness to dictate whether or not we stand up and defend because we're afraid of being called Islamophobic or racist. You know, that narrative is dead. It's, it's, you know, every, every, the whole racist part is dead. It's about standing up for freedom, for liberty. It's about all races coming together under 1776 in Americana. And in, in preserving our free and constitutional republic. This is the freest country on earth. I've traveled, I've been around the world. I've seen what other so called free countries consider freedom. And it, it's, it's not a fraction of what we have here. We have to preserve it. The only way to do that is to get, be willing to bleed. You've got to be willing to sacrifice. Thank you. Thank you for sitting down and talking with me. Thank you. So if, uh, if you appreciate these videos, if you like it, click the like button, comment below, let me know what you think. Well, whatever you think about Mr. Bay Stickman over here, you can, we'll have a conversation about it. New videos every day at 6 p.m., so subscribe. So I will have a video up tomorrow, again, every day. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.